It was rush hour as thousands piled on to the Tokyo Metro. Mothers, fathers, grandparents, and children all entered the trains, likely thinking that this would just be another typical day. They were wrong. Very rarely do events happen that change the course of an entire country, but on that day, that's exactly what would go on to happen. On March 20th, 1995, members of the cult, Am Shinrikyo, boarded five separate trains on the Tokyo Metro system. Once aboard, they opened bags that contained the deadly gas known as sarin gas. The walls of the subway car trapped the gas and the passengers inside the train. Their eyes began to burn and their breaths got shorter as they desperately tried to escape. It's said that anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 people were injured that day, with 13 dying at the scene and more passing away in the following days. This makes it the deadliest domestic terrorist attack in Japanese history. This attack would bring forth new regulations about public transportation, with most of the focus in the aftermath being on making the subway safer. But the focus was also shared with the Am Shinrikyo cult responsible for the attack, and this focus revealed the stunning dark history of the group, along with its potential creation of what may very well be the darkest video game ever made. So in order to understand how dark this video game truly is, we have to first understand Am Shinrikyo, and the story of this cult is wild. <laughs> Am Shinrikyo was founded by Shoko Azahara back in 1984. He compiled beliefs from various religions, occult movements, and scientific papers, and mashed them together and called it a religion. His movement was founded on the belief that the world would soon be facing an apocalyptic level event and that the only way to survive was to join the group, which is a very original premise if I may add. Um, 10 out of 10 there. But what sounds like your typical crazy cult actually began growing rapidly in the late 80s, and that was mainly because of Azahara. He claimed that he was the reincarnation of Jesus and that he was here to save people from the impending disaster. This idea, coupled with his interesting charisma and the fact that he was totally blind, made him a strange and interesting figure for a lot of people. For this reason, it's no surprise that many TV networks in Japan wanted him to come on their shows and do interviews. And after some time, he seemingly became a regular staple on Japanese television. Because honestly, he was must-watch TV, even for those who thought he was completely crazy. And with exposure like that, you're sure to at least gain a few followers to your movement. To many, this group was a punchline and viewed as a harmless joke, but behind the scenes, things quickly became incredibly twisted. Azahara began getting more forceful with his supporters around 1988. He would force his members to donate and oftentimes kidnap and hold them captive to get them to do so. He also took exception to those who tried to leave the group and had up to 20 members assassinated because of this. On one occasion, Azahara became suspicious of a lawyer who he thought might be trying to shut them down. The lawyer's name was Susumi Sakamoto, and he had previously spoken to a news station regarding his concern for this new cult. And so Azahara took exception and sent some of his followers to the lawyer's home. There his followers murdered the entire Sakamoto family including his children. The group was clearly very disturbed, and Azahara was an undeniably evil man, but his plans were much greater than a few murders here and there. 
And in fact, Azahara wanted to rule the world. Now I know that sounds crazy, but by the 90s, he had actually made some progress. In 1990, the group had 24 members running for Japanese parliament, but upon none of them winning, Azahara knew that force would be his only way into power. He began developing chemical weapons and was even working on nuclear weapons as well. All this was done in order for him to take over Japan by force. Along with this, several Japanese gangs were working for his organization at the time, including the Yakuza, who were producing guns specifically for the cult. By 1995, it was believed that the group had amassed a net worth of nearly $1 billion. So if you really think about it, Azahara had a ton of money, chemical weapons, potential nuclear weapons on the horizon, as well as a reliable stream of firearms. And all of this happened within just seven years of the cult starting. So I don't know about world domination, but it seems like he actually had a chance of taking over Japan, as crazy as that sounds. And okay, even if he didn't take it over, he still could have done some serious damage to that country. And that's exactly what he did in 1995. But upon carrying out that Tokyo subway attack, Azahara was quickly captured and thrown into prison, along with many of his followers. It was then discovered that Am Shinrikyo had operations in Russia, Australia, Germany, Yugoslavia, Taiwan, and Sri Lanka. Along with this, the group was discovered to be developing high-grade weapons in the United States and they had their target set on a large-scale attack in New York City. Based off of all the weapons that authorities were able to find, it was discovered that they actually had the capability to do so. It was also found that the cult had a 500,000-acre plot of land with a high-tech lab for creating their weapons, as well as a helicopter that was purchased in order to drop sarin gas on entire cities. With a mountain of evidence against Azahara, he would never be released. Shoko Azahara, the leader of the doomsday cult behind the deadly 1995 nerve gas attack on the Tokyo subway system, was executed by hanging on Friday. In July of 2018, Azahara was finally hanged for his crimes, effectively putting the nail in the coffin of his cult. So now you may be wondering, what's the deal with the video game? How does that all come into play here? Well, as I said earlier, Azahara wanted to rule the world, and to do so, he was planning on using force and terrorist attacks. But he also had another tactic. Propaganda. Am Shunrikia made an assortment of songs, comics, books, and even anime for their cult. This was all done to bring in new members to their group and to paint Azahara as a Jesus-like figure. But Azahara wasn't just interested in your conventional propaganda. He wanted mind control. He hired experts to help him create media that could manipulate and control the minds of the public. And this is when the video game comes into play. Just mere months after the Tokyo subway attack, a game was released by this title, which translated to English means the story of Kamakushiki Village, and the game is highly disturbing. In the game, you play as Shoko Azahara, and you are tasked with running and leading the Am Shinrikyo cult and managing its day-to-day -day operations. With this job, you have to build your resources in order to save up to carry out a final sarin gas attack and you must do this without getting caught. You were also tasked with recruiting new members to the group. 
During the gameplay, random clips and pictures interject that features media directly from the cult. This includes bits of that anime series, random pictures, and strange videos. One of these videos is of a man trying to levitate, which is something that Azahara actually claimed that he could do. But as we see here, the man is clearly struggling to do so. Other images also depict Azahara bottling his bathwater and his blood, which is something that he often did. And upon doing so, he would then sell these bottles to his followers. And people would actually buy it because they really viewed him as a god. The game itself is made a lot creepier by these random cutscene interjections. And that's even without context. But context makes them even darker. Some scenes depict the murders and the assassination that the cult actually carried out in real life, including the actual perpetrator's photos on the right side of the screen. The frustrating part of this game is how much of it I can't understand. Unfortunately, the text is all in Japanese, so I'm not able to get all the little details of this game. And surprisingly, there isn't a lot of information about it out there despite it gaining a good amount of popularity in recent years. But perhaps the most disturbing part of the game is its ending. There are two possible outcomes for the game. If you beat the game, then you get the happy ending. This is when you build up enough resources to carry out a sarin gas attack on the Tokyo subway, just like they did in real life. And once those people are killed, and the world comes together in peace and harmony, and you win the game. If you lose, however, then you get the bad ending. With this, Azahara gets thrown into prison, which leads to nuclear fallout and the end of the world as we know it. And at a glance, it truly seems that this game is yet another piece of propaganda put out by Aum Shinrikyo. It's basically saying that if Azahara gets caught and goes to prison, then the world will inevitably end. And it paints the sarin gas attacks in a way that are actually beneficial and good for society. It's obviously very twisted and disturbing to us, but if a young kid were to have played this game back then, it may have warped their view and made them actually believe what they were seeing. And with Azahara's interest in propaganda that acts as a mind control, one has to wonder if this game was produced to do just that, control the minds of those who played it. It's honestly terrifying, and with what we've discussed, it would clearly make it the darkest video game that I've ever heard of. Now it is worth noting that there are some who claim this game actually wasn't created by the cult. And in fact, the very purpose of it was to make fun of the group. In 2019, a Vice article was posted about its origin that claimed that it was actually created by members of the company who made Hong Kong 97. Which apparently is like the worst video game ever made, I'm not too sure about that, but it looks pretty trash. And according to Wikipedia, a common misconception is that the game was produced by the cult as propaganda, whereas the story of Kamukashiki Village actually portrays Aum and the sarin gas attacks negatively, mocking its members and showing footage of humiliating media coverage. So perhaps this game isn't as dark as we initially had thought. But after looking into it, these all seem to be just allegations at this point and no one has actually come forward and explicitly said that they created the game. So whether the video game is propaganda or parody remains to be seen, and there's still a large pocket on the internet who believe that the story of Kamakushiki Village was created as a form of cult mind control. But the story of the Am Shinrikyo cult is dark and disturbing either way and it remains one of the most terrifying cults in recent memory. So, 